We're gonna do a little side-by-side -side between the first gen Cummins and the third gen Cummins. Some of the main differences, obviously there are, there are lots of them, but we're gonna kinda do some of the things that you guys might be wondering between the two trucks. And if you're wondering at the house in the background how there's less and less of it each day, that's because uh, the neighbors are tearing it down, which thank goodness, I actually hate looking at that thing. Third gen Cummins is an 0459, and this is a 1995 Cummins. So they're both 59s, very different though in terms of the mechanics of them. One is completely mechanically driven, the other one is not completely mechanically driven. Very different, but you know, these trucks, you know, they look completely different. These trucks are only 14, 15 years apart at most, you know, so there's a lot of changes that were made. Of course, this is aftermarket and this one's got some aftermarket stuff, but not, no, nothing too crazy, but there's a lot of changes made in those 15 years. We're not gonna go over every single one of them, but we are gonna go over the main ones that you guys might wanna know the difference on and what my take is gonna be on which truck would be a better fit for you. And that's completely preference, but hopefully I can help you make that choice if you're debating between buying a first gen or a third gen, don't be fooled. You would think, oh, the newer truck, you know, it looks cooler and all the stuff, they're gonna be more expensive. And I'll, well, depending on the one, it could be. It's just the difference between hard to find, not very many of them left, between a little bit more of a surplus, but it does have more creature comforts and stuff like that if you're gonna use it as a day-to-day -day drive. So let's first start off on the interior side of things, guys, this stuff, is obviously gonna look way different than the first gen. Handling is different, the steering is different, the way you feel through the wheel, very different. You've got all kinds of power options, which you could get in some of the first gens, but it was only for like a limited edition trim. For the most part, if you got anything that was not an LE, um, pretty sure it, it was all just you know manual crank windows and all that stuff versus in these trucks, I mean, you would have had to specifically option it to have less options in terms of like, having crank windows and stuff like that. I mean, I'm sure you could have gotten that in these trucks, um, but for the most part, it's pretty rare you find one that's got any kind of manual, you know, locks and manual window. I mean, that's pretty, It's it was pretty outdated even by 04 when this thing came out. All the power features, you got cruise and you got all this stuff. This interior has definitely got some upgrades. This is not a factory interior, so don't get that confused. This is a updated like 2014 to 16 or 17 era of Laramie fourth gen leather interior. This one's got suede headliner, which is also not factory, but looking at the dash, other than this head unit, this is all pretty much the way that these trucks came with the gauges and all that stuff. And um, these trucks from factory made a ton more power than the first gens. Of course, this is as time went on, people use their trucks for different things. You know, it's all the companies and brands, you know, trying to come up with the most power and the most reliability and all that good stuff, the Ford Chevy Dodge type thing. You know, who makes the truck with the most power, the most torque and all this jazz. So as time goes on and people use their trucks for more or different things, you know, people want more power, but they want efficiency and they want all this stuff. So that's kind of the direction all the companies tried to go. And uh, with this truck, I mean, these things, they sound good. They got a lot of torque and uh, they're pretty awesome. And for the most part, these things, even though they have so much more on them and under the hood and more electronics than the first gens, obviously by far, these things are still super reliable and really hard to kill trucks. I mean, yes, they have more things that could go wrong than a first gen just because first gens are literally like the most simplified creature of diesel that had ever come about in terms of pickup trucks. These things are still completely solid and reliable trucks. As long as you maintain them, you drive them with care. For the most part, you maintain them. These things just run and run and run. I'm actually gonna start the third gen up and back it on out of the way. These third gens just, they have a distinct sound these common rail trucks have a distinct sound and if you know what i'm talking about you just you just know they have like a real deep growl they just sound different so i'm going to start this one up and get this thing started and then go show you an exhaust note from behind jumping in the first gen here you can see the interior is very different we're going to get this thing started up though and pulled out so you guys can see it a little bit better because the lighting is currently terrible if it's cold enough you will still have the weight to start and all that stuff first and second gens actually will have a weight to start the second gen ones are in the gauge cluster the first gen one will pop up right here and it'll just say wait to start and that's just the grid heater preheating pushing hot air into the engine as soon as you go to crank it over but look how quick this thing fired up now this is in a garage that was heat regulated so it doesn't count as a cold start and it's really not that cold outside both these trucks generally 
as long as the grid heaters work and it doesn't have any other kind of you know air and fuel issues or anything wrong with them they usually start up very very well even in cold super cold temperatures if you got a good battery and no known issues with the trucks both of them should start up no problem hot or cold out which is a good thing to know because i know that there's a lot of people out there that maybe don't have a diesel yet and you're thinking about it and i'm going to be honest when i was a kid growing up i really in the beginning had no desire to have a diesel other than the fact that i thought they were cool but i was like i can't have a diesel for my first truck i gotta have a gas like because i was so used to my dad having a 7.3 power stroke and his 7.3 was terrible to start in the winter and he even had like new injectors and then he got new glow plugs and it was still like if you didn't plug it in and it was colder than 30 degrees out it was like crank and crank and crank and stop let the thing cycle again let the glow plug cycle and then crank and crank and crank now maybe he just had a bad mechanic who didn't actually fix the glow plugs or fix the stuff that it needed if you left it plugged in overnight and it was cold it would fire up pretty quick generally but if you didn't Good luck starting it if it's bitter cold outside. So now there's a much better view of the interior of this truck. Now this here is aftermarket and this head unit is of course aftermarket and he even left us some random stuff in there. I highly recommend you have one of these made for your first gen cell. It's actually got like a cradle that it sits on that keeps it from sliding back and forth on the hump right there but it also makes it super easy to remove if you don't want it and you need the extra leg space in the middle for a third passenger. This interior is very well done. Now a lot of this interior is factory when it comes to like the dash design the glove box the vents um, you know all the buttons and functions here and the wheel and the gauges down low here that's all factory stuff the hand crank is factory but like the door panels were painted black i'm pretty sure they were originally like gray color um he did put this nice soft touch paneling on both door panels which i think he said he got from lmc truck and then like brand new headliner which they did have a headliner from factory they're just usually always falling apart but brand new headliner, visors, all that stuff. So this interior, other than the head unit, center console, gauges, um, for the most part, this is what you get with a first gen. I mean, in really good condition though, which they're hard to find in good condition, but if you can find one in this kind of condition, that's really well maintained. Everything's been either redone to OEM or a little bit OEM plus. This is pretty much what you can expect from a really nice first gen interior. And I'll be honest, Dodge has had a pretty poor cup holder design for quite some time. I mean, back in the day, it was never really a big thing. And I mean, of course now trucks are overkill. They got like 15 cup holders and it's a five passenger pickup. And you're like, you know, why do you, why do you need that many cup holders? You don't. I think they're making up for all the years that so many trucks just had like no cup holders. Like there was just like in a first gen, there was no cup holders unless you somehow had like one with the bucket seats in the center console and you had like just two. Um, but for the most part, most models didn't have anything at all. In second gens, they had this stupid little pullout tray or little flip down tray. None of the cup holder systems until you got into the, you know, 04, 05, you know, plus were really hardly usable for anything. So this is a really nice upgrade to have in this thing. So now I'm going to step out of this truck and I'm going to let you hear the exhaust note. Keep in mind, this truck is completely different. It's a 12 valve Cummins and it's a fully mechanical driven engine. And, you know, everything about this for the most part is different. This is a non-intercooled model, so that's going to make some differences. The injectors are different. The turbo is different. This one's got a muffler on it. That one has a complete straight pipe. So there's differences. So this isn't like a complete apples to apples, but for the most part, you can hear the difference between a first gen with a muffler compared to a third gen that's completely straight piped. And if you guys are wanting more power specifics, these trucks from factory made about 160 horsepower and 400 foot-pounds of torque, which at the time 
that was pretty impressive. These trucks, on the other hand, I apologize if there's wind noise, it's pretty windy out. From factory in 2004, made 305 horsepower and about 600 foot pounds of torque, but it depended between the standard and the high output model. And I know that this might not be the most interesting comparison video, but I'm trying to help you guys understand the main things that are gonna make a difference. Cause like, obviously you guys know the designs are different. Obviously you know the difference between two wheel drive and four wheel drive, or at least you should if you're looking at pickup trucks. But for the most part, I'm trying to list the things that could be more of a deciding factor for you guys if you're trying to debate between using it as a daily driver or work truck versus a antique piece that you kind of park and just keep really nice because it's just super cool. That's kind of the difference. That's kind of where I met with these trucks. There was a time when buying those first gens was like, oh, I need a work truck and they're cheap. You know, I'm just gonna buy a, a first gen because I, I don't need to buy a nice second gen or a nice third gen, you know? And that was back in like early to mid 2000s. I would talk to the dealer that I used to buy a lot of my trucks from back in Fort Wayne. And he's like, dude, he's like, I remember when asking eight grand for like a low mileage first gen with like 50,000 miles, that was four wheel drive, came out of Texas. That was like, good luck getting your money out of it, you know, because nobody's gonna pay you eight grand for a rust free first gen out of Texas, just because, you know, that's when the second gens had just come out and the third gens. And at the time, at the time, those were not looked at as desirable pre-owned trucks. They were kind of looked at as like, Dude, they're outdated. They've got no creature comforts. They have way less power than what's out there now. And it's just, they're just completely impractical. Now, of course, those trucks are being looked at as like a desirable, hard to find, you know, a, basically an antique piece or a collector's piece that, yeah, you're not gonna drive them every day. You're not gonna work them every day. For the most part, there are guys that still do that. They are finding a completely different niche of buyer for those trucks now. And um, it, they're basically, becoming a collectible piece if you can find them in really good condition and that's the new market for those now people are asking six seven eight nine ten twelve grand for rusted beat up dented i mean just bad gutted interior first gens that are like oh well it runs and drives so it's worth eight grand it's kind of like uh, holy crap totally different market complete 180 on that stuff and now of course all those guys that had those first gens piling up on their lots and they didn't know what to do with them at the time everybody wants to find one and you just really can't find them. But on to my next part, you know, comparing about interiors, let's go into interior sound dampening and quality of keeping noise out. These trucks obviously have way more heavy duty weather stripping and seals. The doors are usually a little bit more soundproof. They just keep more sound out. They just do. Like the cab of this truck, if this truck was not straight piped, I've been in third gens that are not straight piped and they just have a standard muffler on it, which is kind of like what that one is. They're just, they're just so much quieter. Going down the road, there's not near as much wind noise. There's definitely no like wind noise whistling through the cracks of the doors and stuff like that. Like almost every single first gen I've ever been in, even if they have new, new strips and new all this to keep all the moisture and everything out of your cab, they're still just kind of noisy to drive. I mean, they just are like, they're just not the same sound dampening and soundproofing that there are in like even these trucks compared to those. Those things just let in a lot of road noise and that's just kind of how they are. So it's like, if you're looking at a truck and you're trying to debate between like buying this or buying that, again, I'm simply trying to help you understand the main differences and things you gotta look at when you're going to consider one. Are you gonna be driving it all the time? Is road noise gonna be a big problem? Is wind noise blowing through the small seals of the cracks gonna be a big problem? Is towing capacity gonna be an issue? Is the amount of power you're gonna have be an issue? Is the amount of room in your cab gonna be an issue? And another thing to definitely consider is the fact that in these trucks, you could not get a crew cap. You cannot get a four door. So if having four doors is a big thing to you, like for example, me, I now have two kids and a wife. This truck, even in the extended cab model, would not work. Now, yes, they're guys that have done the four door conversions and stuff, but regardless of that, they're not very well soundproofed. They just ride really rough, the four wheel drive models more specifically. I mean, they're just not good family vehicles in any sense. They're old pickup trucks. Back in the day, if you had to throw the family in, it was probably not a big, you didn't even think about it. But now that there's other options out, these trucks with a four door, it's just the best choice. So we've gone over some of the basics, how much power the trucks make, how much torque the trucks make, you know, creature comforts, which ones have more, less. Of course, the newer stuff usually has more. Reliability, that's not really an issue either way you go. Obviously these trucks, in terms of cost of repairs and maintenance is dirt cheap. I mean, even in a third gen like that, the third gen, sorry, I couldn't really see my camera. I'm just kind of like guessing where was that? The third gen, they're still not bad. Compared to other 04, let's say if you're gonna compare an 04 to an 04 Duramax or an 04 Power Stroke, 
these trucks are a no-brainer. Those Thurgens are no-brainer. Much more cost-effective to repair, maintain, etc. And out of those years, I would definitely argue that those trucks are probably the most reliable out of those years. You're probably wondering which one would I choose? I would choose both, but I would choose both in, in different situations. The first gen, because I don't need it as a family vehicle, I don't need it as a work vehicle, I don't need it. Like, since I don't need the truck for any specific reason, I would buy a first gen out of the fact that it's just cool. It's really hard to find. Yeah, they're going to cost you the same or more money than a four door third gen with the same miles, whatever the case may be. That's just the market for these trucks now, unfortunately. And fortunately, if you're the one that's been hanging on to one and the value's tripled in the last five years, I would choose a first gen just for the fact that it's really cool and really hard to find and they're just becoming more and more desirable. And let's just be honest. When you see one of these things roll down the road now, a third gen, don't get me wrong, a clean third gen is still hard to find a super clean one because they are getting older too now but it's definitely like if you can find one of these in this kind of condition roll down the road it catches your eye if you're a truck guy you're like oh my goodness that thing is clean finding a buyer for one of these would not be a problem at all because there's not much to choose from if i was trying to choose a truck like for the money most comfortable good reliability lots of power i can use it to tow i can use it to pull my trailer pull my boat pull whatever i can throw the kids in if i have to i've got the room I would have to go with the third gen. If I was trying to be more practical and it's like, okay, cool antique collector piece, that's cool. Not really in my market. I'm at a stage of life where I need the room. I need the cab space. I got kids, but I also need to be able to tow and pull and I don't want to spend a fortune. I would go with the third gen. That's in pretty good condition or fair condition over a first gen if that was my debate. Hopefully that helps you guys out. I know that it's not necessarily the, the coolest comparison side by side necessarily, but I know that there's guys out there that do not yet have a diesel and they are debating. They're trying to make the choice. They're trying to decide what really makes more sense. Like I think first ones are super cool, but then again, it's like, I'm not really sure, you know, is it going to meet all my needs? Maybe you've already kind of milled these thoughts over and you've kind of thought about it, but if it were me and I had to choose, those would be the main factors that would help me decide. And honestly, it's up to you at the end of the day, but those would be my reasonings for choosing between the two and why I would choose each one. Totally different reasons, totally different uses in my perspective. Do not forget though, this is your last day, your last chance to get entered for this beautiful first gen and that beautiful third gen in each truck comes with $5,000 in cash. It's two separate drawings. It could either be two separate winners or you could potentially get drawn for both trucks. Just depends on how lucky you are, I guess. But this is your last chance, your last day to get entered for both trucks at the same time. It does end tonight at midnight. So if you haven't done so yet, hit the link, grab some gear, links in the description below, or just type in lnpgear.com, and hopefully I'll be seeing one of you guys here soon to pick up that third gen, and then shortly after, somebody for this first gen. Thanks so much, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.